Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and hello everybody. So now let's uh, move towards the stochastic integrals. Uh, but before that, I will be talking about uh, Wiener integral. But before going towards, uh, you know, our so called Wiener integral, I'll be talking about a little more, uh, you know, about the integrals. Uh, we know that uh, we can have functions uh, which are deterministic and we can also have functions which are deterministic as well as depend on some you know random quantity so we can have functions which are not deterministic functions and then this deterministic function uh, can be integrated with respect to some you know maybe a deterministic function but at the same time this deterministic function can be asked to be integrated with respect to some random quantity let's say that is brownian on the same lines we can be asked to integrate this random function with respect to some deterministic function or some maybe you know just dt or we can be asked to integrate this random function with respect to some random quantity let's say brownian see so, so here i have got some remarks as far as this kind of functions are concerned so we are fine with these because we can do them with our ordinary uh, the classical calculus even this can also be you know if possible can be you know you know treated can be you know worked in calculus because it's it's just like you know this is deterministic so it's like this function has t and this this has t so like it's like you know uh partial integral sort of thing that it's a multi-valued function and you are integrating it with respect to one of the variables okay uh, somehow and here uh, you have a deterministic function but you are integrating it with respect to some random quantity now this type of function uh, this type of integral is called Wiener integral we will discuss more about this so this type of function this type of integral is called function uh, Wiener integral and this is then the uh, general stochastic integral let's get started so we are interested in integrating a deterministic function with respect to some random stochastic process fine the the question is how to integrate this okay so if if you have been through calculus then a uh, real analysis then you 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 know one of the notions called riemann stilge we can try that here uh riemann stilge stilge's uh stilge's integrals what happens there uh, so we have a famous formula from there and that is given by a to b f of t with respect to some function g of t to be equal to f of t times g of t a to b minus a to b g of t times t of f of t so uh, we can try to integrate this using this so it turns out that uh, can we try this uh, uh, this integral like that uh, a to b f of t db t w to be equal to uh, f of t times b of t w a till b minus or uh, a to b b of t w d f of t but the problem here is uh, this formula is helpful when f of x has 
is continuous and has bounded variations but if you know a little bit from your calculus or real analysis then this function f of 2 equal to t times sine of 1 by t doesn't have bounded variations so this kind of functions can't be integrated using this notion so what we need to do now is we need a completely new notion and that notion is known as the Wiener integral so we will define Wiener integrals in other words we will you know we will define the methodology behind computing this integral of deterministic function f with respect to d b of t w so there will be two steps i'll be starting with first step so the step one is before i move towards step one i need to tell that we will be defining this integral for those functions which belong to a space of square integrable functions on this closed interval of real numbers so let's start it let's get it started so the step one involves the concept of step functions so first you need to you know define this notion for step functions i hope you are familiar with uh, the notion of step functions though the step function if you don't know you need to you know i i can't in this particular session i can't go into the depth of this step function but uh, let me give you the idea that step function is defined by summation i equal to 1 to n uh, ai times indicator function of on interval ti minus 1 till ti so that's that's how you define your uh, your step function where ai's are the real numbers of course and uh, indeed because we are talking about the functions on this uh, interval a to b so t naught can be treated as a and tn can be treated as b so this is how you define first step function and then for step function this one you know this is step function i can define this integral a to b let me let me let me give you know this step function in another name maybe uh, h so the v wiener integral of h of t with respect to brownian motion is defined by summation i equal to 1 to n ai times beta of ti minus beta of ti minus 1 so this this beta of ti is you know brownian motion computed at time ti and this is also the brownian motion computed at ti minus 1 and some books some books say that let's say this integral is a is an operator i then people write that this is i of h which can be given by this right side beta of i may be beta of i minus 1 where this beta i is, is basically beta of ti and this is beta of ti minus 1 and it turns out that we, we can easily show that this uh, winner integral of uh, you know linear combination of step functions where f and g are step functions then it can be easily shown that this is linear operator so the wiener integral is a uh, linear operator fine and there is another property another interesting property of this you know wiener integral and, and that that i will put into the form of a lemma so it says that the expectation of uh, this Wiener integral of step function is zero and variance is given by the a to b integral f of t 
square dt or maybe we can write out the two norm of function right so and also this 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 i of f the wiener integral is gaussian random variable right so we can we can easily prove this this particular theorem so first we need to show that the variant expectation is zero so it's not a big deal to 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 prove this uh, just apply expectation on i of f so we know that expectation and i of f is given by i equal to 1 to n a i times beta of t i minus beta of t i minus 1 right so when you apply this expectation expectation linearly i 1 to n a i so we get expectation of beta of t i minus expectation of beta of t i minus 1 and we already know from the properties of Brownian motion that uh, its expectation is zero so this goes away so you know so this goes away so that's zero and similarly now we can work out to show that the variance is given by the l2 norm squared of uh, f and and to show that you can algebraically show that in expectation of i of f square can be given by expectation of uh, summation i j equal to 1 to n a i a j beta of t i minus t i minus 1 times beta of t j minus beta of t j minus 1 so you can show that this integral so square can be given by this quantity inside the expectation so if now if i is equal to j then then this quantity reduces to uh, or we can see that this expectation of beta of uh, you know the expectation of this integral i of f squared is nothing but expectation of so summation i uh, equal to 1 to n so 1 to n a i square and then expectation of this beta i minus beta i minus 1 square and you know that this quantity is variance of uh, you know the brownian motion so you can write down i equal to 1 to n a i squared and this is nothing but t i minus t i minus 1 which is just the definition of this integral a to b f of t square dt what about if i is not j if i is not j then you can show that this expectation vanishes in other words this you know goes away so what what is left behind is this guy over here why is this integral gaussian in gaussian random variable so of course because it's the linear combination of independent gaussian random variables this is uh, you know linear combination linear combination of independent gaussian random variables therefore i of h is also Gaussian so this was step one so far for the step two I'll be coming in in the next video thank you